So, Rick Pitino and Louisville's athletic director have been fired, or or basically fired, uh, because the FBI seems to have uncovered this scandal between all the major shoe companies and many college basketball programs. Uh, And it looks like this this scandal goes pretty deep and may change college hoops as we know it. But this is simply a result of extending amateur athletic status to those who are legal adults, which should be illegal in my opinion. The way I look at it, when you're 18 years old, you're an adult. You can argue whether or not 18-year-olds are mature enough to be considered adults, whether they're responsible enough to manage money. It doesn't matter. That's your opinion. But the legal age in this country is 18. And I think the problem with these restrictions the NCAA puts on student-athletes is the effort to extend this purity standard to people 18 and over because they're still a student. So when you're 18, you're mature enough to join the military, but for some reason you're not mature enough to go to college, play basketball, and then in your spare time, sign a few t-shirts and get paid for it. Uh, This isn't an issue of whether or not college athletes or colleges should pay student athletes because truthfully, I don't think they should. Your alma mater isn't your employer unless, of course, you're a student who works at the bookstore or something. But if you're a college athlete that's recognizable enough to make money off your own personal brand, chances are you're on an athletic scholarship, meaning the school is providing you with food, housing, and an education should you choose to take advantage of it. You're being... You're already being compensated greatly, but that doesn't give the school or some non-profit governing body the right to say you can't make any money. If I play for Ohio State, I should be allowed to print some photographs of myself, sign them, and then sell them for 50 bucks a piece. If you're so famous for putting a ball in a hoop that when you sign a piece of paper, that piece of paper is suddenly worth a thousand times its original value, you're going to create some resentment telling that person, no, you can't sell that paper, and if you do, you can't play college basketball anymore. Good luck getting drafted. And with that in mind, it's no wonder there's back dealing going on between shoe companies, college basketball programs, and potential recruits. If you let the universities do business, let the coaches and the shoe companies do business, but tell student-athletes, most of whom are legal adults, they can't do business, someone is going to find a way to do business with the athletes, especially when it comes to trying to woo kids to play for a certain program. Because truth is, under the NCAA's current rules, hypothetically, John Calipari can't write one of his recruits a check. The school certainly can't. The director of marketing for Nike can't either. But what's preventing preventing Bob, who knows the marketing director of Nike, from writing a personal check to a top high school prospect and writing, for one year of lawn maintenance on it. And while that may not be the most covert strategy of hiding a money trail, y- you get the idea of how far removed from... <clears throat> How far removed from Nike, Kentucky, and John Calipari this can go before someone is finally paying the student-athlete? There's a reason it took the FBI this long to catch on. So people keep asking, how do you prevent this from happening? But I think that's the wrong question, because you can't prevent this from happening. If Michael Porter can get a shoe deal before he commits to a school, you should let him. And if Calipari says, hey, if you come here, I'm well connected with the guys at Nike, I can help you set up a meeting, you can't really regulate that. But people catch breaks in life all the time by knowing the right people. That's impossible to prevent. So what schools should do is simply do what the NBA does. They should say, you have to wear our uniform, obviously, with whatever sponsor is attached to the uniform, but your feet, if LeVar Ball wants to pay you to wear his shoes with the Kentucky uniform, go right ahead. And I think at some point the NCAA will have to cave on this because it's in their business interest to do so. The NCAA already has a terrible reputation and the NBA Players Association is fed up with the current system, partly because all the players have been through it and understand just how shady it is. In the near future, they'll either raise the playing age or lower it so high school basketball players can head straight to the NBA again. I think the latter is becoming increasingly likely. And if that happens, the NCAA has a lot to lose 
way more to lose than they have to gain by keeping these draconian restrictions in place. So to sum it up, schools shouldn't be paying student-athletes, mostly because a lot of these schools are public universities and shouldn't be using taxpayer dollars to bid on high school athletes, but the NCAA shouldn't stop those athletes from seeking money elsewhere. So if they want to hire an agent, get a shoe deal, or simply promote the local Lexington, Kentucky credit union on Twitter, they should be allowed to do so. That way, players can still reap the monetary benefits of being a high-profile athlete while eliminating the risk of losing their scholarship or injuring themselves and ridding the delayed gratification of making money as a future pro athlete. And that gets rid of this system of Steve, who knows Tracy, who knows Bob, who knows the director of marketing at Adidas, who knows Rick Pitino, from writing an 18-year-old a check so they can spend a semester and a half at Louisville.